Welcome back to another one of my shitty vlogs. This is gonna be my shitty vlog series where I aim to show you daily the things that I struggle with as I'm just doing my day to day and also provide you some insights into my course building process. And uh, hopefully that can help you with your day to day when you run into issues or you just don't know how to solve a certain problem. Also, maybe maybe you wanna be a YouTuber. Maybe you're an aspiring YouTuber and you wanna see you know, how to build courses, what, to, what it's all about, what kind of time it takes to build like a high quality course. So for people like that, this, this could be really insightful. For those of you who missed my last video, my previous video where I, it was kind of like my first vlogging video, uh, the course that I'm building right now or the course that I'm working up to building is uh, it's going to be on dynamic feature modules and clean architecture. And I, I mentioned in my previous video that I'm going to be kind of repurposing or I think I'm going to be repurposing an old app of mine, which is the SQLite for beginners course. Probably many of you have seen it. It's probably my most watched course out of anything I've ever done on my website. It's free. So that's probably why. Um, and it's for beginners, so that's also probably why. So when I'm building an app, my first goal, like after I know like what I'm building, generally speaking, I know what it, the, the purpose of it is gonna be. Generally, I go into building what I like to call a skeleton. So this means implementing kind of the, the core fragments or the core activities. I'm kind of leaning towards uh, the single activity architecture these days, so usually it's one activity. Um, and then I get all the fragments set up. I build kind of almost like uh, placeholder fragment classes, and then I set up all the navigation. And this 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 helps you build a skeleton, almost like a scaffold that you you have, and you can uh, just kind of layer onto after you know what the main navigation is going to look like, and also kind of build in styling as you go. So usually I start with things like: Is it going to have a bottom navigation? Is it going to have a navigation drawer? Is it going to have uh, what kind of toolbar am I going to have? And when I have when I mean toolbar, I mean is the toolbar going to be managed by that by the activity or by the activities, or am I going to have individual toolbars in each fragments? Now, these days I lean towards, uh, a, since it's a single activity architecture, I usually put like the support action bar, I set that up, I put that in the activity, and then you put uh, a some kind of fragment container inside of that main activity, and then the fragments will inherit that toolbar. And then you can programmatically change it to kind of fit your needs, but these days, navigation components makes this stuff really easy, which I'm gonna show you a bit of uh, what I've been doing today. So let's take a look at my quote unquote scaffold of the app that we're gonna be building or the one that I'm gonna be building for dynamic features. So um, like I said, I start with like placeholder fragments, uh, figuring out kind of the main navigation system. So here I have a bottom navigation view, I have a toolbar and I have like a, a fragment in the center. So what I have here is I'm using this custom dynamic nav host fragment thing that I talked about in the previous video. It's for, um, it's built specifically for dynamic features and navigation components because before there was no way to access fragments that are inside modules. Uh, they can't basically communicate, so there needed to be some kind of a bridge to uh, be able to move from fragment to fragment or module to module if you're using navigation components. So uh, let's let's just walk through the app here. So the first app here, is, or the first view here, is a note list fragment. So you can picture in the finished version of this app, it's going to have a list of notes in here. Then if you were to select a note from the list, you would get taken to a detail fragment. So that would show things obviously like the the contents of the note, the title. It would be editable, maybe show the date, just like, you know, your classic detail fragment. Now, the things that I want you to notice here about when I navigated to the detail fragment is number one is the bottom navigation was hidden. And I talked about this in my previous vlogging video, um, why I decided to just hide the bottom navigation as opposed to keeping it in view at all time. Basically, it comes down to handling multiple backstacks. Handling multiple backstacks is such a pain in the ass and I really just don't, like I talked about in the previous vlog, like I said, I don't think people are gonna care, number one, and it's it's so complicated that it almost adds like another layer to the course. So I wanna, I wanna stay focused on the task at hand, the subject at hand. So um, basically what I'm gonna do is, every time you navigate somewhere away from one of the, the top level fragments, and by top level fragments, I mean like note list fragments, reminders fragments, these are top level fragments. So when you're in those fragments, the bottom nav shows, but if you navigate into a detail fragment or any kind of like deeper version of the app, some something deeper, uh, that bottom navigation is hidden. And that basically removes the need for the multiple backstack issue because the, the user can't click the bottom nav, so there's no need for multiple backstacks. Um, and it also cuts down massively on the complexity. Like 
massively, massively simpler. So uh, that's what I'm gonna, that's what I've decided to do with the bottom navigation. Okay, so the next thing that I want you to notice about this detail fragment is the toolbar. So the toolbar also changed. So notice if I press back, I'm taken to that top level fragment. I can go to notes and I'm taken to that top level fragment. Notice the, the toolbar arrow, the back arrow is gone. So if you click and you go into a detail fragment, the, the back arrow is there. Obviously this makes sense because if, you, if you're going further into the app, you need to be able to press the back button so you could do using the back button on the phone or using the back button in the toolbar. And this is really easy with navigation components. Well, actually, I should say normally it's really easy, but because we're using a dynamic feature app, it's actually a little bit more difficult. But here, let me just show you how easy it is if, if you weren't using a dynamic feature app. So you would just have, you know, like one function that you'd get an, in your activity, you'd get a reference to the navigation controller, you'd say bottom nav view set up with the nav controller, you'd build this app bar configuration thing, which all you do is you pass, you're passing the IDs to the top level fragments. It's pretty straightforward, literally just passing IDs. Then you call setup action bar with nav controller, which is a function that is inside of app compat activity. And boom, there you go the arrows automatically show whenever you navigate. So very, very simple, um, super simple. Like I said, you navigate, the arrows automatically are handled by themselves. You don't have to do anything. But so here's here's the downside. Or here's, here's when it comes to dynamic feature modules. So because the dynamic features, the modules exist uh, kind of outside of the main app module and they're in and they're independent of each other too so i'll just show you the app structure here so we have app we have notes we have reminders and we have settings these are the three kind of modules so notes knows nothing about reminders reminders knows nothing about settings and the app module which is where all of our navigation is and main activity doesn't know anything about notes reminders or settings so obviously if you are providing these top level fragments that becomes a lot more difficult because the activity doesn't even know they exist so that's basically what I've been dealing with today is uh, being able to access variables or values that are inside of modules that the app module doesn't actually even know exists. So I mentioned this in my previous vlog, there's basically two ways or three ways you can, three main ways you can go about this. You can use reflection, you can use dagger with some really kind of finagly setup, which is what I ended up doing. Or you can use a service loader, which a service loader, I believe, uses reflection internally. Also, actually, now that I think about it, now that I just set it up, the dagger function also uses reflection. So no matter what, you have to use reflection. If you don't know what reflection is, it basically means that you uh, it's a Java, um, what would you say, Java property. It's a property of the Java language where you can look up a class, even though it's private or it's not available or it quote unquote doesn't exist. You can look it up by its package structure or package name and you can get a reference to that class. So that is is one of the things that we did or that I did when setting this up with Dagger. I'll actually just kind of show you briefly just so you can see kind of a little little um, peek at how it's done. So basically inside of the app component, the top level component for the application, I extend by, I create an interface for each feature. So I have notes feature and reminders feature. There's also settings feature, but we're not, we don't need anything from settings feature. So that's why it's not in here. Then you hold a reference to that interface, a nullable reference to that interface inside of the app component. So you can see I have one for notes feature and reminders feature. Then at runtime, I use reflection to look up those interfaces and then I return the values that I want. In this case, it's just the IDs of the fragments that are the top level fragments. Um, and then I return them to main activity. So if you take a look at main activity, you can see here I have two functions, initialize notes feature and initialize reminders feature. And all it does is get, get a reference to the app component. It says it looks for that nullable parameter that's inside of the app component. If it's not null, then I get those top level fragment IDs. So this is uh, the kind of quote unquote finagly way that you do it with dagger. Of course, there's a lot more to it. I'm just showing you kind of on the surface level what's going on. But um, that's unfortunately the only way to go about this. So now that I have kind of my core navigation system set up, and I know generally what each view is going to do, I know what needs to be in the views, um, this, this scaffold is built essentially. Now the next st stuff that I'm going to move on to is I'll actually pull up an architecture diagram for you. So if you look at the classic MVVM architecture that the Android documentation shows you in the jetpack section, um, so you, you know, this is, this is what they recommend. You have your activities, your fragments, your view models come next, 
your repository and then the different data sources for that repository. So now, now that I have like my scaffolding set up, my navigation set up, what I like to do is I like to start at the back and I like to work my way up to the fragments. And what I mean by that is I work, I start with where the data is coming from, uh, the different and the different sources of data. So in this case, this is just going to be an offline application. It's going to be using the room persistence library. That's the only source of data. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start uh, figuring out like the interface methods for accessing the room persistence library. Uh, then I'm going to work on the repository. So building out the functions in the repository, building out the the data structures that I need to be returned from the repository then figuring out the view model and then going to the view. So that's kind of how, that's my process. I like to start from the back and work my way up to the fragment. Cause you know, the, the hardest part I think is getting the right data to the UI, you know, displaying it and figuring out what your UI looks like is, is easy, right? Once, once you have the right data, once you have the ways to get the data, the ways to, you know, trigger the events that get the different data, um, all that stuff is much more difficult than actually just taking the data and putting it in the view. So I like, I, that's where I like to start. I kind of, I guess you could call it, I start with the hard stuff and work my way to the easy stuff and then uh, just kind of refine, refine, refine and refactor along the way. So uh, that's going to be it for this shitty vlog. Hopefully you like my shitty vlog. And I, I want to try something different for the next one, the next vlog that I make. Leave questions down below. Leave questions in the comments section. Um, it could be about the project I'm building or even a project that you're building. Um, and maybe I'll go and I'll select some that I think provide the most value to the people that are listening. And I'll go through them and maybe address them in the next vlog if, if I don't run out of time. I don't want these to go too long. This one's probably already gone too long. I'm aiming to get them around, you know, 10 minutes long. Now, before you go, if you like the video, please like the video because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Obviously, it makes sense that YouTube recommends videos to other people that are liked by other people. If this provided any value to you and you enjoy watching me do this, please like it. That's all. I'll see you in the next one.